Hello, I'm Neil Whelan, and welcome to the Wesleyan Podcast. Brought to you by Wesleyan Financial Services. It's a triple head this week, as Graham Layfield, Wesleyan Financial Services Group Local Manager, talks to Paul Forder, Regional Manager for our medical customers, and Kabir Ahmed, Wesleyan's GI Commercial Manager. They cover a lot of ground as they discuss the commercial issues impacting GPs and how Wesleyan is here to help them. This podcast is, as always, for information purposes only, and does not constitute financial advice. If after listening to this you want to learn more about how Wesleyan can help you, I'll be back at the end to give you more details. And with that, I'll hand you over to Paul and Kabir, but first up, Graham. I'm joined today uh, by Paul Forder, who is regional manager with uh, in the medical division and manages a team of advisors uh, who look after uh, GPs and GP practices. Uh, and also joined by Kabir Ahmed, who is the commercial manager from our general insurance team. Welcome, gentlemen. Well, thank you. Thank you, Graham. What we're looking to cover today is really just to consider um, uh, some of the issues and some of the challenges, some of the things people may need to think about when bringing sort of commercial solutions into their financial planning for their GP practices. So, Paul, maybe if I could start with yourself. Um, uh, what sort of things should GP practices be looking to consider uh, when they are planning their finances? Yeah, Graham, I mean, it's a really good question, actually. Um, whether you're setting up or actually already running a practice, there's a lot of considerations you need to take into account. There's many elements in the business that uh, you would need to think about, uh, with financial planning, protection being high on the list, and key, you know, some of the key considerations to be thinking on this certainly which I'll bring cabin in a bit on this is like the business insurance such as protecting your business with property and equipment the specialist insurance really around sort of legal action and really important at the moment is the cyber crime which I know cab you'll be sort of covering shortly as well but protection I mean um you be protecting your business against sickness or death We've seen a massive change in this recently with a lot of impact of other members of staff as well. But as other things that have sort of come out recently is whether it's commercial investments, so if you're holding large funds on accounts. But it's always important to consider the, the, the wider points as well, uh, such as partnership agreements and succession planning, because we are seeing that retirement side of it where people are looking to sort of like exit the business. I mean, what plans have you got in place with these type of things? There's a lot of things that need to be considered, like I say, whether you're setting up or actually already running a practice. I think that last point on things like partnership agreements and making sure the structures within practice and the business model is it places a huge learn. Uh, Paul mentioned their sort of business insurance, which is a, a sort of a, a high level summary cab, but that's obviously an area that you touch on. So why is that area uh, so important and what sort of things should people be considering? Yeah. Um... With, with business insurance, I mean, it, it's something, uh, I suppose, uh, for start, uh, it's needed by law. And the only element of that that's needed by law is the employer's liability. So if a GP surgery employs people, then they need to have employer's liability. Uh, that's very cheap, very cheap and inexpensive to get hold of. Uh, but with so many priorities for GPs to focus on, um, look really looking at the whole business insurance uh, in terms of uh, losses through, I don't know, damage by flood or water damage, or even as simple as somebody tripping and falling over. Those things need to be really considered by GP surgeons, particularly because they've got a lot of footfall, um, a lot of equipment or specialist equipment. Um, and inevitably, they, you know, it is a business. So if, if something's not right or if something's not working, they, they do stand to lose money. Um, so, so I guess for, for a GP surgery, the, the factor to consider is having a good, uh, the buildings and contents insurance and contents, what do you mean by that, include uh, specialist equipment like the ECG equipment or any other machineries they may have. Then to have a good, robust uh, build, uh, business interruption uh, insurance cover within that. Uh, again, that, that, that's basically if the surgery is closed for whatever reason, then they're not losing out on income. Um, and the Final thing is probably looking at sort of um, insurances for uh, computer systems. So, so, for example, nowadays, obviously, we do tend to work at home a lot. So if there's any laptops or any other sort of equipment that we may take home with us uh, to work with. So those are the kind of things you'd want to look at and not just look at employers liability. As a it's uh, interesting you say that. And, and actually, you started mentioning a couple of examples which sort of brings on the importance of specialism and specialist adv advice um i uh, i know that things like uh, 
surgery insurance and uh, contents insurance are, are things potentially available through uh, brokerages and, and so on. But you and your team are very much specialists looking at, at the, the specialist markets that we uh, advise. Why do you think that's so important? Um, again, it, I suppose for, from um, our point of view, or as an insurance specialist point, point of view, we look at, at sort of GP surgeries as a business. So, uh, you know, they are earning income. So we look at the whole whole thing together. Now, any business uh, around the world will have that numerous amounts of risk and one of the key ones that sort of we all hear about it we all sort of see it but really don't think it's going to happen to us and that's sort of more on the cyber side of things so you know if you if you take a gp search they hold probably the most lucrative set of data patient data is probably the most sought after uh, and cyber criminals will do anything and everything to get hold of that um now We've all heard of the uh, NHS uh, sort of uh, cyber incident a few years back. Uh, now, yeah, the NHS does does cover that and has covered that. Um, however, um, it's not going to cover sort of uh, employee data. That's not going to cover it. Or it won't cover, for example, I don't know, um, let, let, let's just say a receptionist leaves a paper file sitting around um, and it gets stolen. Those things are not going to be covered within the cyber insurance because that's an individual mistake. Uh, the NHS uh, cyber policies will not cover those kind of things. Um, and and those things are easy to uh, easy to occur um, around the business. You know, you've, you've got, it's a bit of a busy situation, people coming in and out, data can be picked up at any moment. Um, Cyber is something I'd probably say speak to your brokers about. Um, not it, it's something that I, I guess it's not um, being well publicised, well educated on. Um, however, it's very real, and we suspect this will be probably one of the biggest areas or biggest insurance uh, policy types over the next uh, next few years. Um, particularly with all the things that are going, you know, around the world in terms of uh, cyber terrorism and things. This is something to consider. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, Cam, you, you mentioned cyber insurance, and there's there's a, a potential misconception, certainly within GPs and GP practices, that, that the data that they is is protected entirely by the NHS. And while some of it is, uh, there's an awful lot of data, I believe, which isn't covered by their NHS policy. Uh, so, what sort of things there should people consider, and what sort of risk exists there? Yeah, so f first and foremost, I'd say NHS data, let's, let's, let's be clear, the NHS da data, the NHS cyber policy will cover patient data only. That's it. So anything to do with the patient data, someone hacks into an NHS software, that's what's covered. What isn't covered is everything outside of that. Um, and again, that could be, as I said, as simple as somebody leaving a record or somebody sending an email with a patient uh, record on there to somebody accidentally. The moment that happens, <clears throat> we have to report that to the Information Commissioner's Office. As soon as you do that, there's a whole heap of uh, work that needs to be done. Um, and because it's an individual mistake, what happens there is <clears throat> uh, you're going to have, A, the regulator on, on, the, uh, on the back. You're going to have uh, Information Commissioner's Office, uh, Officers investigating into this. Uh, and there could be some fines attached to these. Those are the things that could damage any business. You know, some of the fines are ridiculously high, um, and rightly so, because, you know, we have to protect the patients and their data. It's an important thing. Uh, this is where cyber uh, crime, uh, crime comes, sorry, cyber policy comes in. The moment an incident happens, you would contact your cyber insurance company and they will take the steps with you, take you through it all and hopefully try and rectify and just to give you an idea of how it works, so as soon as you notify the insurance company, they will get onto the Info information commissioner's office. So get that uh, logged. They will <clears throat> hire a specialist to look at what's happened. So is it a ransomware? Do they need to pay? If they need to get the authorities involved, they'll get that involved. They'll hi hire an IT specialist to get your systems back and uh, recover any data lost. Uh, and the, the other one, which is actually quite, quite critical, which is uh, they will hire a PR specialist to get the message out there uh, so that um, obviously with things like this, it can be a reputational damage and a PR specialist will help you get through that. So the idea is the, the cyber, uh, cyber pop, pop policy will help you get back to the position you were with minimum uh, cost to you. So that sort of brings us around to the original question, which was why specialist in insurance is, is important. Actually, we're talking here specifically about one type one of policy. business, a GP, a, a GP practice, and yeah. being able to talk to 
uh, guys in your team, for example, about how that works for them is going to be really important. It also uh, sort of brings into another area, which is the decisions that are made for both practices and maybe even the wider uh, networks, primary care networks, for example, um, uh, within practices about people making decisions on behalf of the group, which is, again is other things that which create risk and potentially have uh, uh, solutions in place. Yeah, absolutely. So th- th- this is obviously as, as businesses, you have leaders, managers who make decisions on a daily basis. Um, now, again, the, the business insurance or cyber insurance will cover the business elements of it. But unfortunately, when it comes to uh, things like, um, I don't know, uh, somebody misinterpreting a uh, pro- process um, because their manager hasn't trained them or something, that liability sits with the manager and on their personal liability, it's not covered by the business, uh, which means they can be sued or they can go or they have to defend themselves again against those allegations. Um, so, again, this is where a policy like directors and officers comes in. So, so, so I suppose for a GP, uh, GP surgery, uh, it's probably the most complex area that I've worked in where insurance as a whole is not discussed. The, the only thing, you know, I hear practice managers are coming, I need employees liability insurance, I need billions and content. That's fine. That's the things we're probably aware of. It's the unknown. So I'll, I'll leave, uh, obviously, with, with our listeners, uh, one tip, which is when you're speaking to your insurance company or your broker, the first thing to say, look, I'm worried about this or I'm worried about that. Start with that sentence because then they will ask you the right questions to sort of work out what is it exactly you're worried about. And then they, they'll come up with three solutions. One is probably they'll say, right, well, unfortunately, that can't be covered because there is no insurance that will cover it. That's fine. You, you, you can live with that. That one, unfortunately, again, there's no insurance, but you can do X, Y, Z to mitigate it, explore those avenues. And what you're left with, the stuff that we can protect, and then they can talk you through the insurance policies that exist. Um, so have those conf- conversations. I know, obviously, practice managers, GPs are very, very busy. Uh, but once a year, take the time to have that uh, conversation with them. I think that's a great tip. So, Paul, just moving back to, to yourself, and we've, we've heard from Cab there of a couple of really sort of specialist in uh, areas that will apply to to gp practice what about the wider uh, sort of business how can what what things should they be considering and how can they go about protecting um their business um the gp business against the unforeseen yeah graham it's a really important part actually. it's a really good question actually because before i go on to answer that that question about the protecting the business i think the specialism is a really really good point um because the advisor that we've got, they, they look solely after the, the gem, uh, sort of general practice, uh, whether it's the GPs or the partnerships as well. And I think it's really important because the advisors that, that we've got, they've got the finger on the pulse because there's been a lot of changes in general practice. I mean, I've been here for a number of years, Graham, as you well know, um, and I've seen so many changes. And probably over the last few years, it's just increased exponentially. And so for having the guys that kind of are aware of not only what is actually happening within general practice, but the mood and the feeling amongst uh, the the partners and the staff there, it's really important because what they can do is there's a lot of things. And I mentioned before about the things that they should consider. There's a lot of things that won't they would never have considered in the past. And so having that specialist of advisors that that understand and know your business is really important because they can steer you on some of these things. And um, Cab, you mentioned there before about the cyber crime and stuff like this. This is something probably a, that's very recent that might may not have been considered because there is that, you know, the thought of, oh, the NHS covers us for stuff like that. But it's looking at the protection. And you mentioned there about the, you know, how can we protect against these unforeseen circumstances? Well, you know, we offer a, a range of uh, specially se- um, selected and structured solutions to design that are specifically designed for the practice and to protect like the income, whether it's the partnership income, whether it's key workers as well, that could impact on partnership profits as well. You know, because if any of these go off work sick, whether it's through illness or injury, this can have a massive detrimental effect on partnership profits, which therefore is is the partner's income. Um, and we've seen this a lot. I mean, in the past where you've had the partners and we've mentioned before, whether it's locums as such for the partners, that's always been something that's been high on the agenda because we mentioned about the practice agreement is clearly stipulated in it. But we've seen I mean, one thing that COVID has, has taught us a lot, probably over the last two years, is the impact of the other key members of staff 
that you know practices have changed whether it's the practi nurse practitioners the prescribing nurses you know we've got these key influential people within practices which if they go off work sick not only is there a sick pay cost there's the impact on the business which then means that they've got to get someone else in to, to replace them so there is that additional cost that you know that quite we can sort out a very simple solution to this really which is a very cost effective thing whether it is covering those costs whether it is covering sick pay and as long as we can put the practice in an informed position to go right this is the position that you would be in it then gives us the opportunity to then tailor those solutions specifically to the practice because each practice will be different as well so it's not an off-the-shelf kind of one size fits all some practices have this kind of in-house kind of bits that they can do. So it's really, really important to sort of sit down and sort of say that actually it's not something that necessarily you have to just go, oh, we've got to take it on the chin type thing. Because, well, actually, for a very cost effective thing, you can put something in place that sort of says if, if this happened, it's fully protected. So your business gets to run as normal you get your profits are protected in this situation. The impact to your patients as well is limited as well because you've got somebody else coming into these. So that's one of the things that I do think that, again, it goes back to the original point of that, that specialist um, advice that you give is somebody that can truly understand what it means to your practice, but being able to probably more importantly, articulate that to you as well as the impact, not only to you as, as a business, because they are businesses now, but you as actually an individual as well, because that's the part where as an individual in that practice, and if you are a partner in the practice, somebody else's sickness could therefore affect your income and therefore your family's position. And I think obviously with the, you know, the cost of living crisis that we've got at the moment as well, the cost of inflation and everything going up, small changes in people's earnings, small changes in these can have a massive impact. So by, by being able to almost like put a fixed cost on things at the, at the start of a financial year to go, that's factored in any situation we can do this, then that's great. And again, we look at this, we can look at whether it's a blue sky scenario or a case of going, right, what's, and I mentioned before, there's the brilliant graph that Graham, I know that we've used on several times, which is that probability and the impact part of it, which is if it's high probability and high impact, well, we need to make sure that that's protected. There are other situations where it's going, well, actually, the impact of that individual won't be as detrimental. So it, it's worth sitting down with someone to go through this and look at the impact, look at the situation for your specific practice and how it will how it'll affect you if something like that happened. Thanks, Paul. I think I think listening to both of you is really interesting because the the, the, the the although on slightly different areas, the one thing that, that, that is very similar in what you both said is that there are areas within the practice um, risk stroke protection side of things which people think of the surgery insurance the uh, the employer liability insurance and the start uh, people going sick there are those areas which were sort of everybody's reasonably familiar with but actually there are a whole bunch of other areas which may not be uh, you may not have even considered as a practice your cyber insurance, the impact of death, the property ownership, for example, in a practice. One of those areas mm -hmm. that, that, Paul, you mentioned right at the beginning, which is um, something that might need a bit of explaining. One of you could explain why is important. But you mentioned commercial investments and for GP practices. What sort of thing would you be thinking about there and why is that uh, would be important? Yeah, I mean, it's, I'll be honest with you. It's It's something that's probably reared up in the last uh, few years and one of the great things is we we saw an increased demand and it started within certainly our hospital sort of doctors but coming into the general practice now it's certainly something that needs to be considered because obviously with like say the high inflation money if money is just sitting in a bank account really it's getting eroded with inflation it's losing its value quite considerably and quite quickly at the moment so it is certainly something worth looking at. But before we even look at commercial investments, because, again, it's one of those bits where everything has to be taken into account, because whether it's suitable is the main priority that we look at on here. Because within the practice, you're going to be looking at things in a number of bases. You've got like short term needs, which is stuff that you need to spend money on, whether it's uh, the here's and now, so equipment and stuff like that. Whether it's a case of you're looking to expand on the practice, so you're looking to 
refurbish, you're looking at these, which might be shorter term. So there's the money needs to be readily accessible. So there's not much that we can really do with that. And nor would we want to, because it is a case of it's going to be needed in the short term future. But we are seeing an increasing uh, amount of practice that are actually holding these capital accounts. The money's in the, the funds, which just there's no use for them. But people don't want to take the funds out of and where they're sitting in there for quite some time. Well, actually, it's like I say, it's losing that money over time. So what we do do is we will sit down with the individual, sit down with the practice about their plans for this money. But we are seeing within general practice, there's almost like this the term that I, I refer to, which is almost that portfolio side of it. Because as a partner, you've got that practice. And as a business, you've got that money that's sitting in there, which we can look at to see making it work as hard for you as possible if there's no plans for longer term. But we are seeing this with certainly partnership level, whether you've got additional businesses such as the pharmacies and stuff like that, where the money is sat there and you don't want to take it out for varying reasons, whether it's tax or anything like that, that is just sat there and it's building up. And this is the point where one of our specialist advisors can actually sit down with you and explore the need for this. What are your plans? What is the the right thing to be doing this? How can we make these funds work as hard for you as possible, as tax efficiently as possible as well, whilst having the the access which is is needed for you? It's about really making that money work for you as as much as possible, rather than just sitting there. We we all know that within business accounts, the interest rates off of these are very low, if anything at all. So therefore, that you know, the compounding that with inflation does really have an impact on it. But like I say, it's not a case of a one size fits all, Graham. It certainly is something where the local specialist uh, advisor can sit down with the practice as a whole, take into account that that full thing. And, I, you know, I like to refer to this as, as that holistic kind of thing where we do sort of say we're not just going in there to look at the, the protecting your locum. It is that point in having a look at your business, what it is you, that your business does, how it works, how it runs. And almost doing this um, this risk assessment to kind of, sort of say, let's have a look at the impact of these things. But let's have a look at what the funds are doing. Let's have a look at what the vision is of your practice as well, because whether it's about that growth in the practice and about what it is. So it's, there's a lot of considerations to be doing. We are seeing a, a big increase in the, the desire for these um, commercial investments, because obviously, like we mentioned before, that inflation and making it work as hard for you as possible. So if you are holding funds on the the the, the business, or whether it's on that personal side in limited companies, and you're kind of wondering and fearful, obviously, with this inflation, sit down with one of the advisors who will be able to sit down and go, right, let's have a look at what can be done. And can we do something for them? And they'll be able to give you a really sort of tailored solution on what's right for them to be doing. I think that's uh, you, you You mentioned there. There is no one size fits all. We have thousands and thousands of GP um, uh, individual GP practices, which each is an individual business. And right. And then there are pharmacies and individual locums. And that, that sort of, there are there are there are no two businesses exactly the same. And I think that point about um, the, the, getting advice is really important i did have one final question which was Graham, uh, just just to, sort of, just to sort of say on that yeah because i mean it is and that that the advice side of it, it is really important because i mentioned before about the holding monies in there um because that's that's a real key consideration because we all know that in, in the current uh, climate as well but in general if you are looking to invest this we need to make sure that what the plans are for this because investments you know they can go down as well as up and and that's the bit that we have to have that kind of risk assessment to it from there as well, because if that money is specifically needed for something down the line, you know, there is that risk of, you know, you might not get back what you've originally put into it. So that's why the advisor will sit down and really make sure that it's the right thing for you to do before going ahead with it. So my, my final question to you both was going to be, why is, financial, uh, why is it important uh, to get financial advice? I actually think you guys have actually answered the question already <laughs> in the sense that, that, that we've already identified that there are those sort of core areas that partners, practice managers, the management teams, et cetera, within practices will be familiar with. But we've touched on a whole a host of different areas which might not have been considered whether it's that it's money sitting in 
business accounts, whether it's protecting the business from cyber uh, attacks, whether it's the decisions that are made on behalf of practices or on behalf of networks, those types of areas, which sort of answer that question. It is so important to get advice and also get advice that's specialist. And again, I just want to, I suppose, reiterate and just ask you to both wrap up and any final thoughts on that the importance of that specialism of the advice that people get. So, Cab, just any thoughts on that? Yeah, Graham. Um, I suppose, in my opinion, there is no other industry where specialism is more important than it is in the medical sector. You know, doctors, GPs, they, they're the people who assess everything. And then at some point, we will have to go to a specialist, whether it's a heart specialist or ENT, what have you. There's always a specialist in that. And there is no other sector does that well. Um, and, I, and I think it's, it's the same, same thing for when it comes to insure, insurance or uh, protect, protection. Uh, you need a specialist who understands your business, who knows the stresses you uh, you go through, who understands the risks that you face. Um, go into a, a broker or an advisor who works with multiple of business could miss something. And, you know, it's not on purpose or anything. It's just because they've got a wide variety of knowledge. Um, and they will pick out the important bits, but they might miss out what is critical to you and your business. Um, and, you know, both of you have said, as I said it is probably absolutely necessary to find the right specialist who understands the business. And that would be my advice to all. Mm. Any final thoughts from you, Paul? Yeah, I, I probably won't be as articulate as Cab there, though. I mean, but it's, um, mm. uh, I couldn't emphasize that enough. Yeah, I mean, the advisors that we've got, like I say, this is what they do on a daily basis. They, they will be seeing between sort of four and five GP practices each and every week. So it is that part of understanding these these things that that the you may not have considered. So these will be the type of discussions, having that specialist side of it, and where they are dedicated in that. It allows us to kind of, sort of say, have you considered this rather than that part of kind of trying to find a solution type thing. We're actually more of a case of look, having that genuine service and the mutuality of the Wesleyan, I think, is absolutely fantastic because it ties in so well with our client bank that we put our clients at the heart of absolutely everything and everything that we do. So by having that deep understanding of our clients, it is that part where we can go, look, have you considered these? And these are things that you should be looking at. And it's and it's that part. And like say, whether it's whether it is a cyber side of it, whether it is the change in general practice with these key people working in it, it allows us to go back and see this. And we see this day in, day out, where we've seen clients year in year, we can go, actually, because I understand and know you, I think you should be looking at this as well. So it's a really good point. And especially side of it, yeah, I couldn't emphasize it enough. It's one of the reasons I've been here 17 years as well. Gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you this morning. Um, thank you so much for your time. And to those people who've taken the time to listen to us, thank you for doing so. I hope you found it uh, a, a useful um, a few minutes of your time. Thank Thanks you. for that, Graham. And that's our show for this week. Thank you to Graham, Paul and Kabir. To find out more about how Wesleyan can help GPs and their commercial operations, go to wesleyan.co.uk, where you'll find pages specifically for financial advice for doctors. On there, you'll also be able to find out more about things like income protection, insurance and retirement planning. If you're on social media, you can find us on Twitter at Wesleyan and search for us on Facebook, LinkedIn and Instagram. You can also like and subscribe to this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Audible and Podbean. That's it for now. So until next time, thanks for listening.